Welcome to Turning Tuesday. This one's a long one, folks. Filled with mistakes, recoveries, and live action breakdowns. Action packed with what I hope you'll agree is a beautiful final product. I hope you enjoy what I've got to show in this one. There is a lot of information and hopefully a lot of entertainment. This week I started with a little bit of a plan and that plan was to take some laminate that I had done a few years earlier and turn it into a pen stand. This pen stand was going to be round and it would be able to hold multiple pens. I wasn't entirely sure how many pens I'd be able to fit at the end of the day because I didn't know what the final product was going to end up like. So the plan was take the wood which was a laminate from several years earlier and it was the bottom section of this and each one of those layers is about oh, I'd like to say two centimeters thick so you will see that in the video they're actually quite chunky and this is actually quite a nice little piece that comes out so we're going to take that wood we are going to add a lathe we are then hopefully going to get a product that allows a pen to function and what this is is i was hoping for a nice teardrop on top so i was hoping for something like this out here have something for the pen to rest in so the plan was have some grooves in here that the pen can rest inside and then i would bring it back down and almost go down for uh almost a chess piece type shape and bring it back for it to rest on and then maybe add some nice curvature around for the edge unfortunately the plan went out the window and you're gonna see that in the upcoming video so stick around and while you're at it please like and subscribe starting off with a center hole this hole is for mounting onto my chuck and with any luck this Kiln dried wood that is extremely hard and dense doesn't beat me up too much. Shocker, it does. So here I am just mounting it on to the chuck. Watching that closely as we get to the chuck and releasing just before it makes contact. Spare those hands, wrists, and any other body part. Hand tighten, and off we go. Give it a quick turn, beat up the quill extension, and off we go. So this project started with me going up. I've got an hour. Let's see if I can make this project in an hour. Shocker, it didn't. So this project has taken me two weeks because as I'll go over, some of the parts took a bit longer than they should have because I didn't do things correctly. So we're in real time here and as you can hear and see, the vibration is real. I am taking an absolute pounding from the square edges and I've got to turn it nice and slow so that I can get it round. So I'm going into a bit, bit of a warp speed now and I will slowly get there. I will frequently stop and check. As you can tell this was one of the worst laminates I've ever done in my life. Nothing was square and I didn't feel like throwing it through the bandsaw to trim it up and that was probably a mistake because I could have started at a higher speed if I had have had at least taken it to square but I didn't and this is the result so an hour of pain and two weeks of work So the video itself is a shrink down from six hours turning in total. Uh, a lot of that was sanding, as you'll see, a lot of it was sanding. More sanding, a bit more sanding, um, a little bit of turning, some more sanding, and then putting some finish on. 
as well as revisiting after some mistakes. You may notice that I've taken the far end down to almost round. I say almost, it's still a very big square spot there, but it's a lot better than the sharp edges that it was. Now I am going to shake up the cuts here because I'm trying to use the entire tool. I am doing push cuts, I am doing some face cuts, I am using the wing as much as I can, so I'm using both sides of the tool the whole way around. As I said, this is kiln dried wood, so it is blunting my tool very quickly. Throughout this process, I did sharpen probably six times, and I really needed to. Now you notice some of those shavings are starting to get a little bit longer, but they've still got a long way to go yet. So I'm stopping frequently just to see how round it's getting and I move the tool in each time. So I move the tool rest in because I want to be as supported as possible. Still a lot of ghosting happening on the turning. You can see straight through the right hand side there. That's how I know it's still not quite square. But as you can see, towards the center and onto the left, there's almost no ghosting. So that's why I keep stopping to check, just so that I can confirm how far off we are. By now, I'm putting a quick mark on there, and I'm going to come in with a push cut and identify that for myself so that I can know how far in I've got to go. As you can see, some of these shavings are starting to get really long. And that's what we want, so that means we're cutting beautifully. As you can see, we've now got that far end actually round. And yes, we have to get the rest of it in that far. So what I've done here is I'm now doing push cuts in. So I'm coming from the high edge and I'm pushing down to where I've got it round. I found that's the best method that I've got right now for not taking an absolute beating. We're in real time right now and having a look at just how much of a beating I'm still taking. So as you can see, my hour of work was a vast underestimation. This is how fast I'm turning in real time. Going back into warp speed, and here we go. there I was just running my finger over the edge of the bowl gouge now some people may go why are you using a bowl gouge and that's because I'm turning in end grain effectively this is the same grain orientation as you would for a bowl so I really don't want to use spindle gouges on this I've got no idea how they'd react I just went with this and I went I'm pretty sure this is gonna work better than any other tool I've got You may notice there I'm just tightening everything up because I can feel a bit of vibration and I've increased the speed a little bit. And those shavings are really starting to get long now. And making an absolute mess in the process. Increasing the speed once again.
So right now I'm noticing that the tool's not cutting very well. So I'm going to run my finger over the blade and go off for a sharpen. You'll hear the noise and see me playing there in the background. And we're back into cutting. Now, this is still running at the same high speed as before sharpening. But you'll notice that the wood is disappearing a lot easier. A sharp tool makes a lot of fun. As you can see, that back end is now definitely round. Now I'm trying to get off the last of these wings, or as much as I can. So I'm using the wing of the bowl gouge up on that tip. So you'll see that ghosting starting to disappear quite nicely. As you see, I'm going for those push cuts straight in. And a lot of that ghosting is now gone. There's still a couple of flat spots, but it's a lot better. Switching into real time now, and this is where you get to see a combination of a sharp tool and a round object on the lathe. What I'm doing right there is putting a lot of pressure down with my left hand, or on the screen is the right hand, closest to the tool rest into it, and just letting the bevel go with the wood. So I'm pushing in gently with the arm and the tool tucked in tight against my body, and I'm just letting it move with the wood as it gets there. And as you can tell, that's throwing absolutely gorgeous really satisfying shavings. Right about now I'm noticing the tool is starting to get nice and warm. You don't want to let the tool get too hot because that will blunten it and you really don't want that. Now I'm almost at the hour I'd allocated myself for the entire project, and as you can tell, I'm still not even round. And there's time. So I come back after a little bit of work I had to do elsewhere, and I get back into some bevel cuts. For extremely dry wood, this is actually cutting quite nicely. And as you can tell, we are now round. Which means we can focus on getting some nice clean cuts and starting to shape the project. 
So right now, I know that I'm going to have that centerpiece mostly hollow. So I am just hogging out as much as I can. I also know the top is going to be mostly empty, so I will join that down. So we've got the sap inclusion there, we've got some nice bore holes going through it, and more surprises will appear throughout as we get there. As you can see, these are throwing shavings absolutely everywhere. And that's why I have a vacuum head on the dust extractor. It's not so great for the large shavings, but when it comes to the fine dust that gets thrown from kiln dried wood, it does the job absolutely beautifully. I'm going to switch through some tools here just to have a play and try and get an understanding of what's going to work best. So I'll switch from my big bowl gouge to my little bowl gouge. Because I thought I'm going to be doing some finer detail, so I'm probably going to need to get in there nice and tight with this. I tried the spindle gouge just for more giggles and have a feel of what it would do. While I'm still in a large phase, I wanted to see if it would create any tear out or anything obvious. It didn't, but I still didn't feel comfortable using it, so I chose not to. Now. This round nose scraper carbide tip is one that I actually, so I've broken the, bro broken the tip of this, the actual carbide bit. Somewhere in here I got a catch and it no longer tightens down properly. I believe I just need to replace the blade but I'm not entirely sure. Either way, it was 100% user error. I decided to step out the tip of this and try and work it back down. And then I'm like, hmm, hang on, no, I still need to hog it out the actual core of this. Right here I notice another borehole down there, 
but I also noticed this sap inclusion. And I'm like, hmm, that could be good, or it could be horrible. Let's see how this plays out. So I decided to use the sap inclusion on the rim for where the pens will rest. Right now, I'm just trying to get rid of that bore hole. And funnily enough, it wasn't the only one. There, I was like, yes, I am really enjoying that sap inclusion location. So I've decided to include that as a feature piece. Now, you may recall in my original plan, I wanted to have a beautiful beaded center where it's nice and raised and curved. I ended up not doing that and I just went with a cove. Tried the round nose scraper, did not enjoy it in this stage. Just trying to play with all the tools and try and figure out what I actually want to do right now. Starting to try and define that teardrop shape that I originally wanted and it was looking like I was going to end up going with a round top instead of a teardrop because I didn't leave myself enough material. Right now, I am coving in underneath that lip. So that actually has a cup on the bottom right now. You may hear a little scream there because it's telling me I'm getting a bit thin. And so I try to match that cove on the top. And then I get a nice catch. And I'm like, hmm. And add in a little few expletives of myself and realize, ah, oh, it's not that bad. Okay, let's get back into it. Another little catch and got sent flying. And that was the oh shit moment. Alright, so I just want to go over this really quickly as to what actually happened here because this was not that great. So, what happened is I've started eating away at this to try and make that teardrop shape. Unfortunately, that did not go to plan. So, what we're going to do is move on to the next frame, and you'll notice that it's really starting to come in nice and deep through here. And as we move into the next one, this is where that catch occurred. Now, what's happened here is this wing of the diamond and the nose and 
that upper edge have all caught. So three different locations, which has just jarred the entire piece of wood, and off we go. We're going to head that way. So, as you can tell, this is not a desirable state. That is a piece of wood heading towards my face at about 60 kilometers an hour, and it did make impact on a face shield. I didn't exactly know that it had directly impacted my face shield until after the fact. It didn't hit me directly in the eyes, it was down where the mask was. And now that I've seen the footage, it scares the absolute crap out of me. And this is why, kids, we always wear a face shield and a mask. Because the mask putting pressure on the bottom of the face shield actually saved me here. Because I suspect if I wasn't wearing the mask, it would have smashed in on my jaw and it would have been extremely painful. So, we're going to move along and so it's just impacted up here and it's now starting its downward trajectory. So we are headed down here and you'll notice the next frame is about there. So, as you can see, I've completely lost the tip of my object here that I was making and that's a bit unfortunate. And here we go. So, Right now, that entire piece went up, and we have one piece here, one piece here, and me going, holy crap, what just happened? Now you'll see some of the dust is starting to come off the lathe, and everything's starting to settle down. So this one on the left here has now started to fly away, this one is dropping down. Now this is interesting because when it dis when it came apart from here, it came out in a single piece. So I don't think it actually broke until it impacted me. So that's very interesting. Scary, but interesting. And again, why we always take safety seriously. And you'll notice the first thing I did was pulled my hands away because I knew something wasn't quite right. My main focus was on my hands, because without my hands, I've got no job. Because I have these as dollar signs. Right, so we are now just going to buzz through these. As you can tell, I'm still on my way backwards, just trying to stay the hell away from everything that's going on. Because, yep. As you can see, dust has exploded absolutely everywhere. I just love, in the actual clip as it's going, this little piece down here, you just see the little pieces of dust fly everywhere. Like, it's not great. I mean, I'm standing on three inches of dust down here because it's actually quite a bit of waste when you get into it. And yeah, as you can tell, that piece is still falling. So it came down, bounced off the tool, and continued. The other piece is gone. I've only found one of them in the shop. I had no idea where the second one went. So still a little rattled, I decide I've got to now clean up that end. So, come in with a couple of different tools and try to get that squared up. And that's when I go, hmm, I've already got the bottom cupped. Why don't I just turn it into a small bowl on top? So it's a shallow dish sitting on top after I've done this little bit of turning here. Again, these are the things you've just got to account for. Mistakes happen, and you just overcome them. It doesn't have to define the end product. Now, with nothing to press into and that top quite thin, I wanted to be able to press in and support it properly so that I could finish hogging out the center. So what I've just done here is grabbed an off cut of purple heart, which was mostly square, and I've pressed it in 
to try and support it a little bit better. Now I'm just rounding over those edges because I actually caught one of my knuckles. So I'm just rounding a little bit so that it doesn't hurt so much. I did catch myself and it was sharper than I expected. So I've just softened that up a little bit and getting back into it. I've now turned the tool rest around to give myself some more support so I can hog it out really well. So right now I'm still trying to overcome effectively the undoing of my original plan. The product is still going to be the same, but the project is taking turns that I did not expect. So right now I'm just trying to get this a bit skinnier and to look appealing. I could have still put a nice rim in there, I just chose not to. And I just found the final bug hole. I shouldn't say final, it's not the final. It's just the biggest and it remains. You may notice here that I can't get the tip of the tool in very well on that cupped side. So I've got to come up with another way around that because it won't be with my big bowl gouge. The bevel was catching on the top of it. So I pulled out the round nose scraper again. And that seems to be taking care of most of the grain tear out, as well as allowing me to smoothen it off. I'm enjoying this nice transition at the base there. take some of those sharp edges off again and now I'm trying to square up the side I decided to go with a square base and put in a little round on the bottom I didn't want it sitting perfectly flush with the table that it's sitting on I wanted a little bit of a shadow gap underneath it I didn't want too much Now, we are moving into the sanding. I'm going to swap in between a couple of different blocks. I'm going to realize that I'm not sanding hard enough, so I will switch over to some 40 grit. Since this is sanding, and I think we can all agree one of the most boring things in the world, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who's been supporting the channel. Your comments, your likes, your views have all been noticed and really appreciated. And if you've got any feedback or anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. My email is on the account as well as the comment section are always open. 
I do try to read all and respond to any that I can. I don't think I've missed one yet. So if you do feel like leaving a comment, then by all means, please do, because I really do appreciate it. If there's something you want to see out of the channel, then please let me know, because right now I am looking for projects. So if you want something, then let's have a look and see what we can do. Even if it's just watching how I might go about making something that you've been considering making. Or something that you're really good at and want to challenge me at it. Now here, I've done a little bit of a MacGyvering and tried to mount this on the center of the tailstock so that I can use it to slide in. And I've also set up a second camera angle, which I was actually really appreciative of because that's a lot of smoke and it's headed straight up to the other camera. What I'm doing here is every second index hole. So on the left here, you'll see I've got the indexes. I take the pin out, I rotate it to, and I go again. So I did a lot of measurements on this to figure out what was going to work the best. And I found that two index marks was the best for this project. This is probably not the best bit for this job, but it did the job. I'm pretty sure Sandy, after the fact, saved this job more than anything. Now I've forgotten which index I was on, so I went back and... Moving around. Then I noticed that the tool slipped there, so I went to tighten it up. When I tightened it up, the nose is now a bit higher, so some of the holes don't line up. I noticed this straight away and tried to adjust for it. As you can tell straight away, it's cutting back to a nice medium depth. I've got that beautiful smoke still going. Mmm. I'm really glad that I wear a P2 respirator. I wasn't entirely sure what was going to happen with this sap inclusion. I wasn't sure if it was actually going to survive or not. I'm very glad that so far it has. And that's the last portion of the sap inclusion. We are almost the whole way around now. And I must say, it is coming together. This is mostly how I wanted this project to come out. buzz through and give them all a quick touch up. So you'll notice here I've gone in and I'm just rocking it back and forward. Trying to clean up those edges a little bit. I gave up on that idea and I pulled out the... I want to say it's almost the... Uh, round sanding attachment for the Dremel. I don't know what the actual tool's called, but as you can tell, that's leaving a nice result. However, it also clogged the Dremel by the second hole. So I move over to using some sanding brushes, and I'd use this throughout the rest of the process.
Right now, I was trying to take some of those char marks out more than anything. I ended up accepting some of them for character flaws. So I use the roughest one, which is the cream one the most, and the rest I buzz through fairly quickly. But a bit of sanding goes a long way, just trying to clean those up, and it worked a treat. As you can see, I lost a lot of size difference there. It really did chew away. And you'll notice here that I'm trying to round off the top and bottom of these because that's actually what was chewing them away. Those sharp edges, it was just catching because I was pressing a little too hard. So I'm focusing on taking those sharp edges down from the top and bottom because if it's going to do that to the sanding wheel, then it's going to do that to the finish on a pen. Now, as you can see, I'm really just buzzing through these grits now. And it really is just a matter of a quick touch up here and there and move on to the next grit. Moving on to black, which is the final grit. And you'll notice I'm just quickly buzzing through these because it's already at a state that I'm very happy with. And then I'm going to give the entire surface area a quick touch up. This is just taking the edge off the sanding sealer because I've decided I'm going to put a CA finish over the top of this. blowing out all the pores because I'm going to put that CA finish on and I really want to get it soaked in. So most of the pores are already filled with the sanding sealer but some of the bug holes as well as the sap inclusions are still very porous so I just want to get some finish in there or at least some glue and allow it to dry up. And as I'm spraying on some accelerator you can see that color really starting to pop very enjoyable when I'm watching this. As you can see, it's nice and shiny. That is just from the accelerator, that's not actually from the finish. Now I've decided to take it off the lathe, but not off the chuck. And what I'm doing here is I am trying to fill in the top holes. Now, what I've done here is taken some medium CA that was expired or close to expiring. It's not working very well. And this was one of my mistakes because filling large pores like that with super glue takes time to dry. It took a week and a half for it to set properly. And that's what caused this video to take so long to make. Right now I'm just having a quick run through and putting a dot of glue down and using the glove to rub it in and get some glue into those sap inclusions. You can really see that cupped side underneath there with that sap inclusion. 
Having a look at that now, I feel like I was very lucky that that didn't explode because there's not a lot of material left there and there's definitely not a lot of strong material there. That edge should have snapped off. I got very lucky and I'm very pleased with that. Sometimes you've just got to be happy with the little wins. Now, I noticed that it had already started to shrink down a little bit, so I added some more glue. And I put a quick one on. Now, this is just a touch up. Just a reminder that I use a P2 mask and a face shield at all times on the lathe. If it is running, I am wearing it. If I'm sanding, I am wearing it. Sometimes you might see the beard hanging out below. That's just because it's a big beard. I am always wearing it because safety is first. You do not want to compromise your lungs and it's just not worth your, worth your health because family comes first. If you're not there for them, what good is it? So, stay safe and make sure you're looking after yourself. Now just here, I am noticing a strange noise coming from the lathe, so I just tied that up, and now that noise is gone. You may notice that my purple heart chuck has gotten smaller. I don't know where the other one ended up. Now I just had a big chunk come out of that backfield hole, which I was very displeased with myself about, but that's fine. I will figure it out. I've decided at this point I've already taken a chunk out of it. I may as well continue making it a little bit smaller. Moving into a beautiful face cut, and as you can see, it's just melting away. It becomes quite mesmerizing when you see that ring just moving across the surface. Nothing wrong with backing out from a cut and coming back at it. It's better than trying to force your way through and ruining the piece. I realized I wasn't putting enough down pressure on the tool, so that's why I just readjusted there, and as you can tell, that cut is much cleaner. My footage came out of sync a little bit here. So the audio didn't quite match up there. Apologies for that. Now I've moved over to my little bowl gouge again. And I'm trying to refine this a little bit more. doing here is just going for some face pull cuts. I'm getting that nice curvature and then flattening out the base. Now this is why I went with the smaller tool because I can actually get around that curve a lot easier.
Now, keeping in mind, I have got those grooves on the tip, so I have to be careful not to catch the edge of one of my gouges, because those are flat. So if it catches on there, and yeah, there goes the whole top of the piece. And this video would not exist if that occurred. Now right here, I decided to do something that I hadn't planned on doing at all. I've got a cove sitting in the top of the piece. Now I've just moved over to the round nose scraper. And you'll notice that I do a rapid jump cut coming up. Because I got a catch and I was not happy and I said some things that I did not want in the video. Silly mistakes are silly mistakes, and as you can tell, I'm getting very close to that base. So, I've switched over to my bowl gouge again, and I'm taking that mistake out. So, as I mentioned before, there's a nice chunk missing out of that main backfill down the bottom. So I'm just going to put a light finish over the top and allow it to fill up again. And as you can tell, that piece of thin CA is dry. So, this was the last project that bottle got used for. There's only a couple of drops left in the bottom of it, and I've got another two sitting there waiting to go for pens again. I used some of the EVA glue to smooth it out, so I didn't have too much sitting around. Now, I'm doing a quick rough measure here because I still need something for the pens to rest in at the base. My original plan is I was going to put dots using the Dremel. I was going to figure out a diameter around the outside and mark it out and try and put some dots just for the tips of the nibs to sit in and that was the plan I went with. That was the plan I achieved. That was not the pro finished product at all. So here I am just bouncing between each one. And as you can tell, already off to a great start. One below the line, one above the line, one on the line. All of them off to the left. Not one of them is in line with the groove. I didn't realise this at the time, and you'll see the end result of this shortly. But I started with a nice shallow nose round and then I moved over to a ball tip to widen it out a little bit more. So some of these were definitely not round. That one there was a line. That one there had two dots. Right now I've just noticed it's off on a little angle. I'm like, eh, it'll be okay. Things will work out, it'll be fine. So I go to sand and... So I started with some 40 grit because I realized that I really had to bring that down a little bit and get rid of that black mark from the pencil. So I started with some 40 grit and then I'll go up and get a nice sand on it. And right now I notice my audio is out of sync again. I don't know how to fix that. So right now I'm just sanding with the grain so that hopefully the circle marks will disappear a bit more. 
giving that base a quick touch up. Again, going with the grain between each grit. As you can see, I've given most of the body a sand now. Again, moving with the grain. like the audio might be back in sync again and so yeah moving with the grain between each grit and just accepting how it's coming out right now Uh, this is the final coat, and then I will move into putting some finish on. So, slowing it right down to 250 RPM. And right here is where I get my fingers stuck. some finish on and I noticed that as you're going up the vertical I dropped it on my finger as you can hear it's getting stuck so the vertical for some reason dries out a lot faster I'm not entirely sure why I would have thought it would want to move out using a centrifugal force but for some reason it didn't Again, you can hear my fingers getting stuck to the outside of that EVA foam. It's not really getting stuck to the foam because EVA foam doesn't really adhere to the glue. So it's more sticking to my fingers and then releasing from it. Now I'm really enjoying the chatoyants in this as it rotates around. It's come out quite nice. So I decided to take it off the lathe and start having a play with it. I put the sanding table on and I flattened up the base a little bit better. And now I've realized my mistake. I put the pen down and I'm like, hang on, that's got an angle. And I didn't leave enough space for the big pens at the base. So, because there is quite a large angle, each pen does not stand straight, it's slightly off. And as a result, that's what happens. So, back onto the lathe, and we are going to create a channel instead of 
holes. Allowing me to stand them up properly. Now I've got to go deep enough so that I can actually get rid of the old holes. Not so deep that the whole thing breaks. So I've got a nice little curvature there, enough that the big pens will be able to stand. And I've decided I'm going to put a square edge on the outside so that it catches the tools a little bit better. I don't want them rocking off, so I want them to have a hard edge that they can lean in against. The tips of the pens can lean right into that corner, and the bigger pens will have no choice but to rest against it with two points of contact. As you can see, that finish is coming up absolutely lovely. Apart from the nice hole that I've got there. Right, so now I am squaring it up very nicely. And I will then apply some more finish. I was happy with the way the cut came out. I didn't feel like I wanted to sand it. So I've just gone in with a bit of finish straight into that groove. This time I'm wearing gloves because I didn't want to get glue again. I should have been wearing gloves from the start. I wasn't. Just one of the many mistakes on this project. So I put some finish on there and then I put some accelerator on and now I'm getting rid of the accelerator so that I can do some additional coats. Right now I am just putting my finger in each one. So I'm putting a dot and putting my finger in and just smoothing it out around the curvature. I didn't want it pulling up so I did it that way and then applied some accelerator so that it wasn't sitting there. Now I'm dabbing out all the excess accelerator. And now I am putting some more finish on the entire pen. As you can see, I've got the micro mesh sitting there, and now I'm going to move in and do some micro mesh. I just wanted to smooth out at the base of the cove. There's actually quite a little bit of roughness there, and so I've decided to take the micro mesh and really focus there, and hopefully get that sorted. And I'm doing two coats of the micro mesh and then I go into a polish. Now I noticed that the cove itself was really thin and I've already eaten a way through it. I'm not overly worried about that. It's less about the appeal and I want a bit more grip there so I'm happy for it to have more of a wood texture than a plastic finish. Now, this being not pen shaped and I am putting it on flat surfaces, the water is trying to fly off every time I put it on. It just goes straight out to the edge. So you'll notice I'm applying a lot more water than I normally do while using the micro mesh. And that's just because it is immediately escaping. The last thing I want is to heat up the CA finish because that's how you melt it. That will both destroy the micro mesh as well as the finish.
So we've almost finished the first layer of micro mesh, and it's already coming up an absolute treat. I had no choice but to go back with a second because I realized the cove up the top of it has not got a nice finish. So I had to go back and do it all again because it just was out of balance. You know, so I'm really focusing on that cove up the top of it. So it's the cove underneath that's the problem. And everything else is just getting a really quick touch up because I'm quite happy with how everything else works. So I've got the micro mesh at the bottom and I'm feeling the texture at the top. As you can see that water's really flying off there. Anytime it touches it, it just flies straight off. I'm very satisfied with how this finish has come out. So exactly as we expected. And now I'm moving into some polish. Got a bit of plastic polish compound and I'm just applying that with a buffing wheel. The previous buffing wheel was the wrong size to get in under for that cove. And now I'm just going through each of those little grooves. Very happy with how that finished and yeah as you can see this was the original design for it moving into some photos with some pens on it i really do enjoy that sap inclusion if you've enjoyed this please like and subscribe i really do appreciate it